look at the Occupy Wall Street movement that you're seeing right there firsthand in New York. It's now spreading around the country. This weekend, it's in L.A., San Francisco, Pittsburgh. All you have to do is take a shower, and they can get a job if they went to college. The latest video that we have seen from Oakland uh, is, is arguably the most violent uh, we've seen police uh, against the Occupy uh, Wall Street uh, protesters. Downtown Oakland, California, uh, resembles something of a war zone uh, Tuesday morning when uh, the police uh, attacked the Occupy uh, Wall Street protesters with tear gas, flash grenades, and rubber bullets. This showdown seemed inevitable once police forced protesters out of their encampment near City Hall in the middle of the night. Police and riot gear raided the park protesters had been camping out in for about two weeks. They used tear gas to clear the crowds and proceeded to stomp on tents and people's personal belongings, then arrested nearly a hundred of them. The march was loud but peaceful when it kicked off from the Oakland Library around 4 o'clock this afternoon. Escalating clashes with police, flashbangs, and tear gas. The skirmishes began around 6 this evening and continued through the night. Very kind of disturbing images uh, caught on tape. Uh, one, uh, the police can be seen throwing a flash grenade right onto people trying to help an injured woman. Uh, another caught uh, in the middle, another person was caught in the middle of a class of tear gas was a person that was in a wheelchair. And video shows uh, police officers still lobbying canisters at this person. But if you doubt that the police were deliberately aiming at the protesters, Watch this policeman when a group of protesters attempt to come to the aid of the injured person. What happened? What happened? He got hit. Oh, he got shot. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Wake up. What's your name? What's your name? Shit. The man you're seeing there, Scott Olson, a military veteran who served two tours in Iraq. He's being carried away there. Had a fractured skull and brain swelling from blunt force trauma, possibly from an exploding tear gas canister. This is Marine Corps Sergeant Jay Gentile holding up a picture of Scott Olson and a sign that says, you did this to my brother. You know, both of you served two tours in Iraq and yet the injury um, that Scott Olson sustained did not happen in Iraq. It happened here in California. You get on this bandwagon and you will be destroyed. You'll be destroyed. You know, like it or not, we're all in this together. And, and I'm thankful and proud to be associated with, with the people in New York and in cities all across this country uh, that, that share this bond uh, that I share with Corporal Olson. I'm increasingly concerned about the growing mobs occupying Wall Street and the other cities across the country. What do these people want? They are a bunch of Marxist hoods who want to steal your liberty and your private property and that of your children and grandchildren. Tax relief not only has helped our economy, but it's helped the federal budget. You cut taxes and the tax revenues increase. The tax cut that the top 1% got from uh, the Bush tax cuts equals on average per year for that bracket $66,384. The average income of the 99%, the rest of us, is $58,506. The richest 0.1% of Americans uh, account for 50% of all the capital gains. Let the Bush tax cuts expire. Let all the Bush tax cuts expire. That's $4 trillion. It's not too complicated. In 1907, Congress passed a law banning corporations from donating money directly to politicians. Mr. Obama agreeing to extend Bush-era tax cuts for all Americans, even the wealthiest, which he vowed in the campaign not to. 
Justice Roberts and Alito and their five-member conservative majority overthrew at least a decade of settled law and congressional action and multiple Supreme Court precedents to wipe those laws away. Corporations are free to inject unregulated billions, absolutely unlimited money, into the political system now. Coordinated attacks against us. We're going to respond back with a coordinated attack against the one percent. In Oakland, California, protesters are launching a citywide general strike today that will include an attempt to shut down the nation's fifth busiest shipping port. Oakland has had a general strike before. It was 1946, right after the end of World War II. You are looking at live pictures from Sky 4. This is above the port of Oakland. This is where Occupy protesters, and you can see there's a big crowd of them, have spent the day trying to shut down the port. They marched on ports in San Diego, Los Angeles, Oakland, Portland, Seattle, Tacoma, uh, Anchorage in Alaska. The protesters have indeed managed to disrupt uh, the work of those major ports on the West Coast. We will go to Hyagen for a general assembly. For a general assembly. Still take over the port. And we will still take over the port. Let's go. Breaking news story. We have video right here of at least two police provocateurs in Oakland who were caught posing as protesters. You see him on the left as a protester and on the right in the police lineup. Uh, another gentleman here, you could call him a gentleman. And why are they even infiltrating? These people have been peaceful. They haven't done anything. They have a right to speak out about their grievances. But this is what you begin to expect in a society that's unraveling for economic reasons. Most of the officers in Oakland don't live anywhere near the city. They don't relate to the people as if they're their neighbors. They relate to them as if this is some outside city that they're there trying to, to keep the people from overtaking the city. It wasn't bringing in strike breakers necessarily that started the general strike. You know, I thought about that a lot since that we'd seen strike breakers. But the thing was using the police force that we were paying taxes for to beat us off our own street. Now a bit about why ports. Uh, the protesters say uh, they want to cut into, uh, into, into the profits of Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs owns half of one of the world's largest transportation and shipping outfits. So for the occupiers, it's a way to make a point to get back at, at, at this huge bank, which has very much contributed to the financial crisis. And they claim to be taking inspiration from the Arab Spring. So I guess they're a bunch of Al-Qaeda-type terrorists. This is just a warning shot. It's just a one-day strike. Uh, there is no contract to negotiate right now. What we are saying is, is that the working class is is about to get more militant. Wall Street didn't put in failed economic policies. Wall Street didn't spend a trillion dollars that didn't do any good. With the millions of dollars in loss that there that will happen from us closing the port today. And the 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 profit that's lost from this day uh, from this general strike, that the message will be sent loud and clear to the 1%. Is that the Port of Oakland has announced that effectively it has been shut down, one of the largest ports in the United States. So, let, so that really is an, quite an achievement for a movement which just a few months ago started as a fairly small, very small, in fact, embryonic movement in a park in lower Manhattan. Now it has spread all the way across the country and shut down one of the largest ports in the United States.